Hi, and welcome to my first video on machine learning using Keras, TensorFlow, and the Iris dataset. In this project, our goal is to build a machine learning model that when given new unseen flower measurements, it will accurately predict the flower species. So let's get started. The main Python libraries we will use in our project are Keras and TensorFlow. Keras and TensorFlow open up a new realm of possibilities in machine learning by allowing rapid development and testing of machine learning models. And starting with a simple data set, such as the IRIS data set, allows us to easily visualize the data with Python tools such as scikit-learn and matplotlib. This combination of tools and data should get us up and running quickly. First, let's load the libraries we'll use. Keras is a high-level API which we will use to build our neural network and in our case we'll use TensorFlow as the back end. Uh, Seaborn is a statistical data visualization library which we're going to use to load the iris data set as well as plot the data. And Pandas is a library uh, for working with data sets which we'll use to manipulate our, our data. NumPy is a library for high performance computing which in our case we'll use to analyze um, our results. Now that we have the libraries loaded we can load the iris data set. The iris data set is included with Seaborn or you can download it from numerous locations on the internet. We can see the iris data set consists of 150 rows and five columns. The first four columns are measurements of flower properties and the fifth column is the flower species. We'll use this data to train and evaluate our neural network. Once our machine learning algorithm is trained, we will be able to give it new unseen flower measurements and it will accurately predict the species. When I say unseen, I mean data that was not used during training or evaluation. Using Seaborn's uh, pair plot function, we'll take a closer look at the iris data set. As we can see, the classification of species is easily linearly separable, and we really don't need a neural network to determine the equation for the slope of this line. For example, right here. Or right here. But we want to start simple. We need to create our training and evaluation data sets which I call X-Train, X-Test, Y-Train, and Y-Test. Now there are many different ways that uh, you could do this. We'll look at a different way in upcoming videos, but I find it easy to visualize the data by breaking it down step by step in this particular process here. That way we can inspect uh, the values at each step. Since our original iris data set is a pandas data frame, we can use the pandas functions to manipulate it. The iloc uh, function allows us to read a specific range of values from specific locations in the data set. Let's run this. So for example, x now contains all the flower measurement values and lowercase y contains all the species, the species categories. We must convert these text values into a machine usable format. To, th to do that we will use the fit transform function from scikit-learn's label encoder library to encode the species values 0 through 2. Then, then one hot encode these values using pandas uh, get dummies function. So now we have x equal to all the flower measurement values and y is the one hot 
encoded values for the species. Now we're ready to split the data into train and test data sets using the train test split function from scikit-learn. Again, there are many ways you could do this. This is just one of them. Specifying a value for random state guarantees this value split on successive runs are the same, but this is not necessary. Specifying the test size of uh, 0 0.2 tells the function to split the data in such a way that the tests data set will be 20% of the total. For example, the length of X train is 120 and the length of X test is 30 and 30 is 20 percent of the total of 150. Now that we have our data split, we're ready to build our Keras model. We'll use the Keras sequential model which will allow us to build a network by adding layers with the add function. The dense layer type is your plain vanilla densely connected neural network layer, in this case with four nodes. For the first layer, we must specify the shape, which corresponds to our input data, and we will use the ReLU activation function. Since we want to calculate the probability of our input data being one of the three iris species, we want to use another densely connected layer with the softmax activation. The selection of number of nodes and number of layers is somewhat of an art more than a science at this point. But in a future video, we'll take a look at making these hyperparameters that we can then use Google Cloud Platform ML Engine to adjust the values to optimize the network's performance. We then compile the model using the Atom Optimizer with a learning rate of 0.04 and a loss function of categorical and a loss function of categorical cross entropy and the parameter set to optimize is accuracy. The learning rate can be another tunable hyperparameter. Since we are building a classifier with more than two classes, we want to use the categorical cross entropy loss function. We can get a graph of the model from plot underscore model or plot to dot. If you get the error, import error, fail to import PyDot, you must install PyDot and GraphViz for PyDot print to work. You must install PyDot and GraphViz on your system. Run the following commands. pip install PyDot, then pip install GraphViz, and additionally on a Mac you may need to run brew install graphviz. We are now ready to train our model. In Keras a model is trained using the fit command. In our case we will train our model for 100 epochs. After training is complete we can evaluate the performance of our model. Using the predict command on the xtest dataset, we generate an array of predicted classifications in y underscore pred. y underscore pred gives us the probabilities of each classification. We can use numpy.argmax to determine the categorical number for the text dataset, that is the expected values and the predicted values. So in our case, y underscore test underscore class contains the text values as determined from numpy.argmax. And as encoded above, uh, 0 is setosa, 1 is uh, versicolor, and 2 is virginica. We can then generate some statistics 
uh, on our model using the metrics library from scikit-learn. In our test data set, there are 11 flowers that should have been classified as setosa. And 13 that were uh, versicolor and 6 that virginica. The model identified all the species correctly as specified by 1.0 score for precision recall in F1. This can also be seen in the confusion matrix. Now that we have what we believe to be a good model, it's time to test it on our own data. Say we measured an iris and found it to have a sepal length of 5 and a sepal width of 3.9. That would put it right about here. And also a petal length of 2 and a petal width of 0 0.5. So those four parameters we would expect the model to predict with high probability that that flower was of a species of setosa. Let's do another and give it a sepal length of 5 and a sepal width of 2.5 which would be about here and a petal length of 3 and a petal width of 1. That should be a versicolor species. And lastly, let's do one more, a sepal length of 8 and a sepal width of 3, which would be about here, and a petal length of 6 and a petal width of 2.0. So that should be a virginica. So here we have those three sets of measurements and if we run if we supply that to our uh, our model and call the predict function we see that for the first set of measurements the the first value which corresponds to setosa the model predicted with 99.4% probability that it is indeed a setosa. For the second set of measurements, the model predicted with 96.57% probability that the species is versicolor. And for the last set of measurements, the model predicted with 66.9% probability that the species was uh, virginica. And using argmax again we can print out the actual uh, numeric value for the species. So there you have it. Keras and TensorFlow make developing machine learning models easy. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please subscribe. Also, the code is available at the GitHub link below. If you have any questions, post them below and I'll try to answer them. And also, if there's any topics you'd like to see a video on, post that also in the comments below. And thanks for watching.